In this video, we're going to talk about problems where force is applied at an angle. Let's briefly discuss what we do when there is a force applied at an angle, because it's been a while since we've had to deal with these. So remember, if you have some vector, um, in this case it's going to be a force vector, then the magnitude, or the number part of that vector, is represented by the length um, of the arrow, and then the direction or the angle, or sorry, the direction is given by an angle theta, uh, and the two together, the length of the arrow, and then the direction or the angle, they give you the magnitude and direction of the vector. What we'd like to do with vectors is turn them into x and y components. So you start at the base of the vector, and then you draw an arrow representing the x component, then an arrow up representing the y component, and this will give you a right triangle. We call the horizontal component the x component, and the vertical the y component. Now to figure out what these are equal to, um, we just treat this like a right triangle, where the y component is opposite of the angle and the x component is adjacent. And to find the y component's magnitude, we would take the hypotenuse, or the amount, the magnitude of the applied force, and multiply that by sine of the angle theta. And the same is true for fx. We would take the magnitude f and multiply by cosine of the angle theta. And of course, if we needed to find um, theta, we could do so by using you know tangent inverse of the y component or of the x component. But for right now, let's just limit it, our discussion to using the x and y component as sine and cosine. That's it. Let's do an example problem. A 10 kilogram box sliding to the right is pulled across a frictionless surface by an applied force of 40 newtons at an angle of 37 degrees above the horizontal as shown below. What is the normal, fo normal force acting on the box and what is the acceleration of the box? Okay, so this is a typical drawing of what it looks like for an angle to be above the horizontal. That means if you can imagine a horizontal line, the angle is above that horizontal line. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a free body diagram of everything that's acting on the box. So I'm going to draw a dot down here representing the center of mass of the box. And then I'll redraw that applied force up at an angle. And I'll remind myself that this um, vector is the applied force F. Now, right away, I'm going to go ahead and break this into components. So I've got theta here. I'm going to make an x component and a y component. Then, if the angle is uh, adjacent to the x component, and I know I can use cosine, I'm just going to go ahead and write that this component is f cosine theta, and then the y component is f sine theta. And if I need to um, you think of it as a right triangle and use SOHCAHTOA to figure it out, I can, I can totally do that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is and consider the other forces acting on the box. There is a weight force down, so I know that there is going to be some weight, which I will write. Um, I'm going to actually make the weight force kind of big. You should draw your weight force at least bigger than this sine component. Uh, and I will write the weight as m times g. Remember that the mass times acceleration to gravity is the weight of the object. Okay, and then there's going to be a normal force acting on the box. Now, normally we would say, <laughs> normally, normally we would say that the weight is equal to the normal force, so we draw the lines the same size, and we say n equals mg. But now I've got this pull up from the applied force. So what that means is that you are actually lifting the box a little bit up off the ground, and therefore there's going to be less normal force supporting the box because you're kind of holding it up a little bit. So instead, I'm going to have a smaller normal force. Um, and the idea is that if I was to take this f sine component and put it here, sorry, we'll just call that f sine, then what I would get is an upwards force that is equal to the weight. Gonna erase that part though. Okay, so here I have my free body diagram. I've got my weight, my normal force, the applied force turned into cosine and sine components, and I'm gonna start thinking about so what is the normal force? Well, here's where we think about all of the vertical forces. 
and whether or not they are going to be balanced or unbalanced. Remember, unbalanced means that there would be some uh, acceleration. Balanced means that they cancel each other out. Now, I'm not told that this box is accelerating up, like it's not coming up off the ground. So I can assume that the upward forces, the arrows that point up, are balanced by the downward forces, the, the ones that point down. So I can write n plus f sine theta equals mg. Again, the arrows that are pointing up will add together to form the weight because they're balanced. Okay, well, if my goal is to figure out what the normal force in this problem is for part A, then all I need to do is take the weight and subtract that sine component, uh, or the y component, of the applied force. And now I have enough information to solve it. 10 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared minus the applied force is 40 newtons times sine of 37 degrees. So 100 minus, and you will, you have to make sure that your calculator is in uh, degree mode to get a right answer. So 100 minus 40 sine 37. 40 sine 37 is 24.07. So when we take that away from 100, we get 75.93. We'll call that 76 newtons. So that is the amount of normal force, the answer to part A. So what about the acceleration of the box? Okay, well, so now we think, are there any forces that aren't balanced? F sine theta and the normal force, they're balanced by the weight. What about F cosine theta, though? There's nothing acting to the left. There's no force of friction that could balance this force. That means it's unbalanced, and I will have an acceleration in that direction, because F cosine theta is a net force. So net force is always equal to mass times acceleration. And what we're saying here is that the net force is F cosine theta. So to find the acceleration, we just divide both sides by the mass. So to get the acceleration, I would take the applied force of 40 newtons times cosine of 37 degrees and divide all that by the mass of 10 kilograms. 40 cosine 37 divided by 10 is 3.19. Uh, let's round that to 3.2 meters per second squared. And we have the answer to part B. Okay, well, sometimes you don't um, apply force above a horizontal. So, like, this would be like if you were pulling a box and, you know, you were taller than the box. But what if you were pushing down and at an angle? Well, let's do another example problem so that we can work on that example. A 10 kilogram box is pushed across a frictionless surface to the right by an applied force of 300 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees below the horizontal as shown below. What is the normal force acting on the box and what is the acceleration of the box? Okay, so again, I, I have a picture here to help me sort of understand what below the horizontal means. It means imagine an angle that is, well, below a horizontal line. The easiest way for us to sort of process this applied force is not by using this picture. Instead, I'm going to draw um, a dot representing the center of mass of the box. And I'm going to draw that angle, uh, or that angled force, like this. This is a terrible squiggly line. Like this. So that is my applied force in an angle below the horizontal. Okay, so then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to turn this into components. Now in this problem I still have theta being adjacent to the x component so I can write f cosine theta and here 
I have the y component opposite of the angle, so I can write f sine theta. If you get confused, you just think of this as a right triangle. Um, but then I have to deal with the other forces that are going to be acting on the, on the box. So the first force is the weight. The weight force acts down, mg. And now I have this different situation where not only is the weight pushing the box down into um, the surface, we can think of this maybe as like a table, not only is this surface supporting the weight of the table, it's also supporting this downward push. So the normal force has to be big enough to support both of those forces added together. And again, this is going to be a situation where the downward forces are balanced by this upward force. So what I would say is I would write an equation, I would say N, the upward force, is going to be equal to the weight mg plus f sine theta, which is like saying now I'm pushing down on the box. So the normal force, the support from the table, is going to be equal to the weight of the box plus that push down um, that I'm pushing into the table. Now you'll notice that this is different from the problem before. Before we had the f sine theta actually lifting the box up a little bit. And so when we wrote our equation for the normal force, we got that the normal force is equal to the weight minus that little bit of lift from the upward component of the pull. Now we're pushing down into the box, so it's not minus f sine theta, it's plus f sine theta. OK, great. So we have enough information to solve this. The mass of the box is 10 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared plus in this case, it's a really big force. It's 300 newtons. Sine of, in a different angle, 30 degrees. OK, so this is going to be 10 times 10, so 100 uh, again for the weight of the box, plus 300 sine of 30 degrees, which is 150. So 100 plus 150 is 250 newtons. That is our answer to part A, the normal force of the box. OK, well, so what about the acceleration? Is the box accelerating? Well, in order for the box to accelerate, there would need to be a um, unbalanced force, some force acting to the right that is not balanced by a force acting to the left. Do you see it? F cosine theta. There's no force acting to the left because we're on a frictionless surface. So that F cosine theta is our net force. And again, remember the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Um, and we're saying that the net force is f, kind, f cosine theta. So f cosine theta is equal to the mass times acceleration. And to get the acceleration, we divide both sides by the mass, just like we did before, exact same process. Uh, and we'll calculate the acceleration by taking f 300 newtons times cosine theta, 30 degrees, dividing that by the mass of 10 kilograms. So 300 cosine 30 divided by 10 is going to give us 25.98, so we'll say 26 meters per second squared. OK, great job. Uh, now, this is going to be a similar process for all of your problems with forces applied at angles. Well, we'll get used to calculating normal forces um, and how they change depending on if there is a force pushed below an angle or above an angle. And then uh, how to calculate the acceleration of an object by looking at the cosine component of the force. Later, we're going to introduce friction and talk about the different situations that we can have if there were a force of friction present um, and, and you know, if the box can slow down, speed up, move with constant velocity, that kind of thing. You did a very good job, and this video is over.